Hello guys, welcome back to our lectures. In this lecture, we're going to start another chapter, chapter 3, in which we're going to talk about arithmetic operations in MIPS microprocessor and how to design them. So, uh, in this chapter, we're going to cover, you know, basically addition, subtractions, uh, multiplication, and division, how to deal with overflow, and arithmetic operations with real numbers. And finally, you know, how to uh, increase the speed of, uh, you know, operations generally uh, by uh, some technique called uh, SIMD, as we're going to discuss later, you know, in the chapter. Okay, so we're going to start in this video by the addition and subtraction. So, first how to add, let's have an example of 7 plus 6. Very simple example. Remember, in MIPS, all, th all registers are 32 bits. All operations are done on 30 32 bits. So, when we do the addition, just a, a quick recap, you know, uh, we add uh, two bits at a time, uh, or one bit from each uh, number, and then we have a carry. All the time, we have a carry. Sometimes the carry is zero, like for example here, one plus zero is one, and the carry is zero, okay? Uh, and some other times, like one plus one, we're gonna have a carry, because one plus one is two, two is written like this. So this will be here, and the one will go as a carry. Again, here for example, one plus one plus one is three, 3 is written like this, so we're going to have 1 as a result, which is that guy here, and then this will be an overflow, oh, I'm sorry, is a, uh, as a carry. So, if we do this, 1 plus 1 is 1, 1 plus 1 is 0, and we have a 1 as a carry, 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3, which is 1, and we have 1 as a carry, 1 plus 0 plus 0 is just 1, and the rest is just zeros. This is basically number 13. How about subtraction? Actually, subtraction, you know, since we gonna, you know, uh, uh, we can have a, sub a separate circuit that do the subtraction, but we can just have, you know, the same circuit do both. The same addition circuit do both subtraction and addition. So we can reduce the design size of the microprocessor, which is really good. But how can we do this? How we can, you know, convert the subtraction operation into addition operation? Basically, basically, by converting or add the negation of the second operand. So for example, 7 minus 6 can be converted to 7 plus then minus 6. So we're going to express the minus 6 as its tooth complement. And when you add, you know, a number uh, to, an, uh, to a tooth complement of another number, that's exactly subtraction. So for example here, 6 is written like this. Let's write it in, uh, in 4 bits. So 0, uh, uh, 1, 1, 0 to the power of 0 to the power of 1 to the power of 2. And the tooth complement of this just takes the, you know, the uh, complement and they then add 1. So basically this will be 0 and we have a carry of 1, 1, 0, 1. Okay? So this will be, you know, the tooth complement. And to verify that your, comp uh, your tooth complement is correct, uh, since it's a negative number, the most significant bit should be 1 all the time. And here, you know, just a verification, you know, that we are really correct. But how about the rest of the 32 bits? For the 7, it's okay, we're going to just add zeros. For the tooth complement, we just com continue by 1s. We explained this before in our uh, first lectures in this course. But just as a recap, if we want to convert this back to the 6, we should again complement or invert each bit and then add 1. So when, when we do this, this will be 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. Then the rest will be just zeros. 
then we add one one plus one is uh, is zero and we have a carry of one then one one zero and then the rest of zeros will just be the same so and we go back to the six okay so when we add ones here it's no problem at all it will keep the sign it will it will keep the two the two's complement the same okay then after doing the two's complement of six we can just add so one plus zero is one one plus one is uh, zero and we have a carry of one one plus one is zero and we have a carry of one one plus one plus zero plus one is uh, again two which is zero and we have a carry of one one plus zero plus one zero and we have a carry of one you know one plus zero plus one you know zero and we have a carry of one and so on we're gonna have carries of ones all the time of course 32 times i can do that to, to consume time so just you know the pattern is really cl clear except in for the last one maybe okay for the last bit here it will be one plus one which is zero but and we have a carry of one but since we represent everything in 32 bits we're gonna discard this one okay and if you see the result here, the result is just 1. And of course, 7 minus 6, minus six is equal to 1. Good. Now, uh, we might have an overflow condition. Like, for example, if you add 1, 1, 1, 1, 1 plus 1. If you represent your numbers in 4 bits... Let's see what's going to happen here. So 1 plus 1 is 0, and we have a carry of 1. 0, we have a carry of 1. 0, we have a carry of 1. 0, we have a carry of 1. So the result here is 5 bits, because this is basically 15. This is basically 1. 1 plus uh, 15 is 16. And 16 needs 5 bits to be represented. So that's called overflow and a, a computer with four bits widths will show only zero which is really bad so the programmer must be you know must be careful okay so let's see when an overflow uh, condition might happen in our arithmetic operations let's start by you know we have two arithmetic operations right now the addition and subtraction so, if we add A plus B, and both are positive numbers, okay, so uh, uh, we're going to know that uh, we have an overflow or not by looking at, you know, the, uh, the last bit. Because if A and B are, uh, are signed numbers or signed integers, okay, that means they are positive. And that means that the most significant bit is equal to zero. So if the most significant bit was one, that means it's like a two complement. It's like a negative number. And in that case, you know, uh, that will be incorrect. That means there is an overflow. Because there is a zero that comes, that comes like, for example, if we have four bits each, uh, there is a zero, you know, that, can, that can't be represented. A second example here, if, again, we have an addition, but now both are negative. Both are negative, that means the result should be negative. The result should be negative, that means that the most significant bit should be 1. But if the most significant bit was 0, that means the output is 
greater than uh, zero that means the output is positive which is of course incorrect because there was an overflow just like this one here when both are positive that means the output should be positive but we found here that the output is negative by locating the most significant bit equal to one which is incorrect due to the overflow For the subtraction, again the subtraction is just like addition. So for example, for a minus b, if a is positive and b is negative, that means the addition. Because for example, 7 minus minus 6 is basically 7 plus 6. So and this should, should result in a positive operation. I mean the, the, the output should be positive. The output should be positive. That means the most significant bit sh uh, should be zero. But if you find that the most significant bit equal to one, which means the output is negative, which is incorrect, you know, that means that there is an overflow. A minus B again. If A is less than 0 and B is, is positive, so like for example, minus 7, minus 6. This is of course minus 13. So because it's addition. So here, you know, the output should be, should be negative. So the most significant bit should be 1 because the output should be negative. But if you if you find that the output is positive, which is incorrect, or basically the most significant bit equal to zero, that means there was an overflow, and we should neglect z uh, or, or basically there is an error in this uh, in this output. You should take about you know you should now consider your programming language to discover or not discover the overflow. For example. Uh, if you use C or C++, there is no indication whatsoever if you exceed, uh, you know, the maximum number of that, uh, you know, the, the integer can, you know, can carry. Okay. So, for example, for example, uh, if you add like 32-bit number integer plus another 32-bit integer, and the output, for example, needs, let's say, you know, uh, 40 bits. So in that case, an overflow will happen. But the language, you know, will not notify you that there is a problem here. Okay. Basically, because C and C++ ignore overflow. It's all the time use add unsigned and uh, or add unsigned integer uh, sub unsigned instructions. So it always considers the, the inputs unsigned. For other languages, however, like Ada or Fortran, you know, there will be a, what's called exception. And because basically uh, they use uh, add, add i, and sub instructions which deal with generally signed uh, integers. So when overflow happens, there will be like exception handlers that tells the, you know, the, the user there is uh, an overflow here. So you take care of the result in that case because we cannot represent, you know, your result with the current width of the integer, for example, or the registers. So that the user, the programmer will know that there is a problem but it's really hard to detect such such a bug in c++ okay guys thank you very much for watching this video and see you in the next video bye, -bye.